Welcome everybody. This is Chef on the Weekly and this is episode 32. It is today, 25th of uh, March uh, 2019, uh, and we're back from Seattle. How was your flight, Valdek? It was good. So the flight was okay. It was a uneventful flight. Nothing happened. Nothing was wrong. Everything was on time. Um, very much unlike your flight to Seattle. True. Yeah, I had a slightly eventful <laughs> journey on getting there. But hey, one day additional on the Heathrow airport wasn't too bad. So <laughs> except you're losing all of the time you were planning to actually do something. But hey, that is what it is. You can't really change that. So, But I mean, you, 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 you can still work, right? It's not like you really need to be is in the office unless you're thinking sure. more about meetings and all that. Meetings and then also standing two to three hours in front of the gate because plane is leaving and then hanging there like do, 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 is it leaving is it leaving is it leaving and then eh, eh, it's not leaving it's not fun so um, <laughs> but hey it is what it right. is <laughs> no can do um, and then uh, to be fair uh, yeah it was a pretty event it was 38 hours for me to get to the uh, from home to Seattle which wow. <laughs> wouldn't be the case <laughs> so I mean, and you, then you, you, you could just as well take an, uh, a boat true almost <laughs> <laughs> and then funny enough on the on the first morning when I was in Seattle woke up in the morning read the emails uh, drinking coffee and it's like okay now nice my my flight back to home has been cancelled which is like <laughs> How is that possible? No, the story is repeating itself. <laughs> exactly. Well, it was the flight from Seattle to JFK, not from JFK to Helsinki. But anyway, the, the, the Seattle to JFK is pretty critical because I can't really drive to JFK from Seattle in like... Well, I mean, you time. could, but it would take like two weeks. Yeah, yes, I think it was 44 <laughs> hours was the estimate from Google because I, I, for whatever well, right. reasons I'm checking... Right, stop dri- driving. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Do, do exactly. That, right? <laughs> Yeah, indeed. <laughs> but yeah, those things do happen uh, when you travel enough. It's like you you can't. There's no point even to get frustrated on those things because no, hey, no, no, no. You, you can't fix it. So it nope. is what it is. So, but you luckily had a slightly more optimized experience, so that was good. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It was just like go to the gate, sit down on a plane, sit there for nine and a half hours, and arrive in Amsterdam, and all good. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, what about the MVP Summit in general? Uh, cool stuff. Don't go to any NDA cool. stuff, but yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> but I mean, it was. I th- I think that if if I look back, so I've been MVP now for ten years, and I think that if I'm not mistaken, I've attended all of the uh, summits along the way. I think that one was one of the the best ones. And one thing that really struck me was the informal and an open sphere, like atmosphere. Like everybody was friendly and smiling and open and honest also about things like these things are good. These things can Im- can be improved. And here is yeah. where we need your help. Right. So it, yep. And it worked that way actually two ways. So there was no bashing or complaining or being really vocal in a maybe not the most constructive way. Sure. Right, so everybody really tried to, you know, be polite towards each other, and yeah. I believe in and accepting that. Well, at the end of the day, we're in it together, and we all try to. And it's all also about the passion, right? The sure. the emotions, and because of that, maybe at times we just get carried away and so, just <laughs> on, yeah. On that one, you're basically saying this time there was no emotion, so there was no passion. Is that what you're no, saying? No, no, but I think that uh, I think that that. In one way or another, we managed to be constructive. And yes, sure, like absolutely. there absolutely. was cheering where it was um, due. Yeah. And for other things, there was discussion. There was really trying to find out to understand things like why things are the way things are and yeah. what can we do given the boundaries and also together as the, let's say, two part team, the Microsoft team and MVPs. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the well, obviously, in the in the SharePoint Dev, we've been trying to do this for openly in a, a quite a few years already, and I think it's it's good to see that it's actually getting extended on the other areas as well. So people are kind of adapting the way of being yeah. transparent and open and honest and telling those things which you can tell and not hiding anything. Things do happen uh, because it's just not beneficial for anybody to keep on kind of hiding stuff. Uh, if, if there's issues, there's issues, and let's discuss yeah. how we can fix those. So that's easier that way. Yeah. Um, 
so uh, we had a uh, basically the Tuesday was the, the SharePoint Dev Day, so to say. So we had a quite a few sessions on the SharePoint Dev on Tuesday, the intro for my manager, and then uh, Luca and Pat did a SPFX deep dive the future, and then we had the BMP session. We have where we have MVPs dropping by and explaining what is the la the the latest thinking on the open source projects and where other MVPs can actually help as well. Uh, and I think that was highly beneficial. There was a, I think there was a UC Mori or somebody said that the best session ever because we were having quite a, yeah. quite a lot of fun <laughs> on the, <laughs> the session, but, which is good. It's, it's, yeah, it's good. absolutely. So, rather be relaxed and, and funny and with smiles than uh, painfully uh, negative, so to say. So, rather <laughs> absolutely. Fun. And then we had a uh, SharePoint Dev Day, uh, which went actually insanely well, uh, I would say. So we had a, we started the day from eight until nine. We had the community call and the recording is out. We had a small hiccup on the recording, but Chuck's demo is, is coming out as a separate uh, video. But uh, it was nice, <laughs> to be honest, it was a complete accident. So we were just planning to do a recording of the, of the community call in a one small table. And then I plugged in my computer and poof, I was in a room video streaming uh, mode. And the so whole thing. Yeah. Wow! <laughs> I can do this live. This is really cool. So that was a that was a really cool setup because you can actually in the recording you can say that there was multiple people in a room and how the oh, system cool. works. Done. So it's really cool. Um, and then from nine forward, we had a future of SPF discussions and then craft discussions, identity discussions, uh, and API uh, discussions as well. So I think it was quite nice day. It was. It? it was absolutely. And in all of that, all the time, open and transparent discussion absolutely helps. Now, obviously, we can't go too much detailed on on what was actually discussed uh, uh, or in these recordings, but we're looking into briefly explaining what what is the 1.9 looking into being so we're looking into extending spfx obviously reach to other areas and we talked about this one a few times in a community course we're looking into having additional uh, extension points so basically in the modern uis we want to have additional well mvps and customers want to have additional placeholders which they can override or they can place their own uh, extensions there um, what else we're looking into doing? Uh, we're looking into obviously improving what we have and making sure that that's working more reliably, uh, pumping up the versions. One of the things which keeps on getting uh, popping up is the, is the fact that we are in Node uh, JS and uh, Node JS version eight, which is a bit uh, bad, uh, so to say, because it's a it's still a completely supported version, but it's not the one which is getting promoted on Node JS site, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, and I mean that so. that is the whole thing about Node and LTS, right? So currently. Yeah. I'm not sure if I look back, I'm not sure if that was always the case. There were always two LTS versions. So now we have the LTS, which is the latest table one. And right, right now we have two. We have eight and 10, right? Yes. So in theory, right. SPFX 1.8 is on eight. So and eight is still an LTS, which is all fine. Yeah. But some people, for some reasons, want to be running on 10. And I think that I think the other day I saw an article of somebody who um, dagged through um, the manifest of the packages, and they actually saw that 10 is within supported range. But I think it was never really a part of the test, which is why it hasn't been officially signed right. off right. as supported uh, yep. uh, version. Yep. Right? We and, and that's going to be in 1.9. Absolutely, we need to make sure that we're on the on the 10 or 12. If 12 is actually coming relatively soon as well, so we need to figure out the versioning. Um, right. And this that's that's a classic. This I think we addressed that quite a few times in these discussions. But obviously, we get a lot of feedback on you need to update the version. You need to be on this TypeScript whatever version and blah blah blah. But but it is actually not that simple. Because we need to remember that, as an example, React uh, is running in the page context of the SharePoint. So we can't just take a random React version and run the stuff in a random yeah, React yeah. version because there might be then conflicts uh, between the versions what we're using. Yeah, so, and also, so that is one. And as spe specifically to TypeScript, like when you increase that, you have to test all of the build tool chain, all of the types yeah. for all the things, because yes. oftentimes what I see, if I move from one version to another, the typings break. And yes. it's That's like true. the code still works, but the typings break, they break your build, and then you have to spend like days trying to find out at times, like what is wrong and why, while yeah. the code just works, right? Yeah. So it's like, and, and I think it's also like the typical PM question, would you like us to 
spend days on fixing that, or would you like to see new uh, uh, new extension, features? For yeah, example. exactly. 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 Right. Exactly. So. Like there are only so many people there, and there are only so many hours in a day, and True. you cannot do everything at once, right? So, yeah. what are the most important things? Like being version of TypeScript or something else behind, and having more options, or really trying to stay like on the edge of the tools, but being able to do less with with yeah. with, 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 with with that. Yeah, that pretty much sums up the the challenge what we're always having, and then. Yeah. And the, the kind of a related discussion is that why don't you change the versions of SPFX in on-premises? And that's, well, just briefly covered that as well. So SharePoint 2016, SharePoint Framework 1.1, uh, feature back to SharePoint 2016, feature back to SharePoint 2019, uh, uh, SharePoint Framework 1.4.1 technically. But if you set, select a version from the Yeoman generator, you will get the right versions. Why don't we update the SharePoint 2019 version is that, this, that there is a server-side uh, dependency, so we can't do it like that. And then again, it's the debate of, okay, so if we want to do that, is it a feature pack? Is it a service pack? Uh, and then we need to do end to end testing of the first party experiences, third party experiences, and all of that. So do we want to spend time on that or something else? Uh, well, so that is that. And not not to mention pressing all of the MSDN DVDs to get everybody the new bids, right? True. <laughs> that is true. So, so, let's not, that's a good flow. Well, thank God we don't do that anymore. So for those who are not aware, we used to ship actual MSDN CDs, actually. CDs, uh, yeah, like, like the really big, big yeah. um It was a really massive book yeah. of CDs, which you could then use for installing uh, operating systems. Damn, just. just Oh, those for the days. Like in right? the days. Uh, like in the days. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, anything else from last week from your mind? Well, so we were at the summit. Other than that, I think from the last week, not really. Right, right now, I am preparing to um, deliver another de dev course on modern dev. So not not only SPFX, but also all the things like. We used to do this, now we want to go to the cloud. What are the things that we need to take into account? And it's really broad, right? So it's uh, development model, uh, client side versus server sites and security performance aspect of that deployment, maintenance operations. Also on the tech stack, uh, C Sharp versus TypeScript, um, CSOM versus PMP, JS, and so forth and so on, right? Yeah. So really yeah. broad, broad, broad. Um, field of uh, things to talk about so that would be really cool yeah. um and i guess that will really really take up like the preps for that and delivering that and traveling tra 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 like takes the biggest part of the week yeah i can imagine <laughs> absolutely absolutely yeah for me it's it's mainly well let's see uh we're working on an updated version of the schema for provisioning tenant provisioning we had some interesting meetings on that one last week as well together with engineering so me engine additional engineering and then pmp crew and and then uh 1.8 sharepoint framework uh documentation final updates we're looking into potentially doing 1.8.1 a version of SharePoint Framework uh, for addressing small bits of things here and there. So nothing true dramatical. So it's not like the, the, the basics are working fine, uh, but there's certain edge cases which we want to Cosmetic address. adjustments. Yeah, so it's <laughs> for, <laughs> for some persons that might mean more than cosmetic <laughs> enhancements, but um, in, in a bigger scale of SharePoint Framework, they're relatively small. So that should be good. Either way, either way, we will try to be there from day one, if we can, with the CLI to simplify the upgrade from 1.8 yeah, to 1.8.81 yeah. or anything else that you might have had in the past, basically to take away the, the headache and the discovery part and trying to find what has changed it's like no just run the this command get a script run commands and go we, we you should actually do like a two minute video what does it mean uh so yes. uh, in practice because it's really it's it's hard for people to understand how much the cli actually helps because you can actually go to a solution of an existing sharepoint framework solution and say hey cli give me the list of things what i need to do to update this to 1.8 and you'll get the list yeah. of actions what you need to do and so you might want to actually do a video on that one yep. and we can push it out on youtube now that i'm remembering this so YouTube, to do videos those. are good videos are good so because videos are then visualizing actually what can be done anyway so let's and actually now for er, er, everyone else that was that, that, that was example how vesa delegates work <laughs> <laughs> that's how it works <laughs> so. 
fair point. I could have actually done that as well. But hey, there's only <laughs> it's okay. No, no, no. Amount, of, amount of time on the on the day, and it exactly. is your baby. It is your baby. So I happen to manage that. There's really we have a yes. really great team of folks all over the world, um, trying to help out. So I am just like the guy cleaning lady doing PRs. <laughs> I said that it's your baby. I didn't say that you're actually. Uh, I don't really. Like well, in a way, I don't really feel that because. <laughs> Because like, oftentimes when you see that, it's like people take things personal, and it's like every sure. every kind of sure. feedback or improvement becomes really like this. They like, no, no, you're attacking me. Like I was like, no, this is a project I manage. If I step out, we automate everything. There are other people who do it. So yeah, I just sense. happen to be now the person that does PRs. Yeah, and and cre creates more issues than he solves. So yeah. <laughs> That's how it works, right? Okay, <laughs> right. few articles. We have quite a few items to go through today because we we had a special edition of the of the SP Dev Weekly last week. So, but let's jump on this one. So, few things uh, within the past two weeks. So, some engineering updates and all of that. So, SharePoint news enhancements. Uh, so, news organized. Uh, so, we have updates on the on how to how to present and organize the news. So, you're able to, to basically present news from a hub side and select from which hub side and news orders and all of that stuff. Really cool stuff. Authoritative news, um, so you can actually uh, official and authoritative sites, and I'll target those explicitly uh, within your uh, as as within your news site. Uh, news notification from followed sites, so uh, you're able to get uh, news notifications from the news posted on those sites which you follow, which is kind of a cool thing. And then a really, really big thing is also the base templates. Uh, this is a clearly a draft image or draft uh, experience because that's, by the way, that three stars, by the way, means that we haven't validated that text yet, uh, but it's, it's uh, internal marking, but every now and then it's getting leaked on the on the images as well. But um, you starting relatively soon, you're able to actually save any page as a page template. So uh, what it means is that the page basically has you the, the structure what you have on the page is being saved to the page templates uh, folder, and then whenever you create a new page, and that is being offered as a one of the options. By default, there's three options uh, which are relatively simple, but then you're able to create more complex page templates. And do you know, so is the spec already written or finished or are there, there things still in flux? Uh, so this is, we will ship, uh, otherwise we wouldn't be seeing this picture yet. No, no, no. Uh, so, so I'm thinking about that. Um, is it, will, will, will it be limited to specific site or will you be able to save tablets across multiple sites? Right now, it starts with a limitation on a specific site, okay. uh, which which is a no, which we know as a Microsoft that that's not yeah, yeah, sure. situation. We One need step to have a time, right? Yes, exactly. Uh, but it's 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 already a start to store the base layer templates in a, that site where they're being then used, and then the next step is clearly the fact that we're able to have a centralized location for them, or so, maybe um, maybe even hubs, right? So or, we would have or a in a hub, per, per hub, yeah. Exactly, that is true. That's true. But uh, anyway, really cool stuff uh, coming about uh, to take cool. to uh, to target release, uh, first release, target release, target release, and relatively soon. Um, what else? 1.8 uh, came out on the week before MVP Summit. Really big thing, obviously, for us. Uh, we were planning to get it out slightly earlier, but uh, there were certain technical delays, and, and we needed to align our release with the Microsoft Teams releases, so things are working properly uh, in both sides. Uh, really, really cool stuff. Uh, we have explicit uh, a more technical list of things which are included in the release notes. Uh, so this one actually has a list of things which are also included in a more technical level, like support for TypeScript 2.7, 2.9, and 3.x, which is pretty cool. It's up to you which version you actually so want to use. So why not TypeScript 2.8? Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Yes, um, and library <laughs> components was such a are good preview. version. Yes, <laughs> library components are in preview as well, and there are oh, hands-on lab so even and tutorial available on that. So um, yeah. there was somebody, there was actually an issue I noticed earlier today where somebody was asking, why do you call it a library component? Well, it's like, well. Well, you have to <laughs> call it something. That's that's true. And internally, it was called library components for a long time already. Uh, so it was internally, we've been using library component type for, what, two years Hopefully already? Or ever, actually yeah. since very okay. beginning. Yes, correct, correct. So now it's uh, now it's available also for third party and that's why it's called a library component. Now, is that the right name? 
uh, I, debatable. Is a site web site collection is those good names? I don't know. Debatable. Well, the other day I like... ran survey and it turns out not to be. Yeah, exactly. Name, so. Exactly. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Get them. Now, uh, what else? New stuff from the engineering side, uh, partly from engineering side. So the, the provisioning service is out. Uh, so if I click from here, you can actually say that the provisioning service is in public preview. Uh, so um, this is where we definitely want your feedback on this one. Uh, you're able to basically easily provision lookbook sites uh, to your existing tenant, uh, even on top of existing sites if needed. Uh, that I might get messy, not necessarily, uh, but right now we released a set of uh, lookbook sites um, and we'll get more of those sites available later. And then there's uh, solutions like SharePoint Starter Kit. Now, one thing what I wanted to remind people that if you have a look, for example, SharePoint Starter Kit and scan on, scan on these templates, and uh, there's what's included in the template, obviously, please do scan all the way down with, with say, prerequisites. Uh, do many reasons we were requested on getting the prerequisites down on the page, but they are actually quite important. So we see quite a lot of uh, uh, provisions, uh, provisionings fail because people are not reading uh, the, the prerequisites. Uh, so you need to be a tenant administrator, tenant app catalog has to exist, and tenant administrator account has to be a term store administrator in this particular template case. And then people don't read this, they skip the prerequisites, and then it fails. And then we get a report that it's failing. Well, it's failing because Ah, you didn't read the prerequisites or define that that you're actually making those happen. Good. Uh, one more from the Microsoft side, uh, from uh, around the MSAL net uh, .net point uh, dot net. Uh, sorry, 3.0 preview is now available for MSAL, and that's really really cool. Um, except maybe the side discussion that we seem to keep on releasing previews, not actual GAs, which is a slightly a pity, but hopefully we'll get the, the 3.0 out as a actually supported uh, GA version. So I, I don't have any actual data, so I'm not working in this organization. But <laughs> crossing fingers, crossing fingers. Yes. Uh, even in SharePoint, we are still using a ADL uh, JS because we can't go to the MSAL because it's not actually GA. So there are technical the reasons why we can't yes. that happen. So it yeah, is and I hope that, that they will change at some point because like you really want to make use of the new abilities with AADV2 and the new apps and all of that. But then, yeah, the SDK isn't there yet. So yeah, it would be really cool if it shipped soon. Yep. So that, that, would, that would, we can really benefit of the new um, abilities that uh, that he offer. Absolutely, absolutely. Good. Let's go to then to the community side. Quite a few articles still to go, so we're not going to spend too much time on this. But quickly introducing the article. So, puzzle part introduces hook me up. That sounds <laughs> that sounds like a Mikael Svensson's naming. <laughs> yes, and surprise, surprise, it's his article. <laughs> it is. Who the fuck? <laughs> he always comes up with this. <laughs> no, but what this one is a, a uh, puzzle part is sharing a lot of um, reusable samples. Um, and this one is a nice sample where you can use that to actually add uh, anchor tags uh, in the modern pages. So then you can do deep linking inside of a modern page. And that's actually pretty cool. So basically, it's a web part which gives you that capability of doing that. Um, uh, Elio had a using full potential of React in SharePoint Framework 1.8. So this is a long-lasting request uh, from our side. So, uh, so uh, customers and partners been saying that why can't you use the latest version of React? And well, I want to use that and that version. And answer is no, you can. Yippee! So uh, you're able to adjust uh, which what are the versions what you're using. And Elio is uh, explaining here how to use the stack compiler compiler. 3.2 and 3.2.4 uh, as an example as a TypeScript uh, with your SharePoint framework solution. So pretty cool. That is insanely cool. Woo! Woo! Well, at least we're addressing that the, the long-lasting request on I want to use the latest yeah. and greatest. And there we go. Now you can. So yeah. Yeah, and probably by by the time you've seen the video, there'll be React 17.1 and <laughs> the whole yeah, thing will start, start <laughs> again. True. That's true. Which means that you will never ship your solutions because you're always hunting for You will keep updating dependencies, yes. Exactly, exactly. 
Um, that's uh, JavaScript development. Anyway, um, so common issues with SPFX 1.0 with TypeScript 3.3. So there are certain issues uh, and challenges that people might run into. So Mark D. Anderson is, is covering them through here um, and how you actually can fix these things as well. So Which is why Elio used 3.2. Because there was no issue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair point. Fair point, actually. Yes, indeed. Indeed. I didn't actually even notice that. Good point. Good point. Uh, good article around anyway on the on the version differences and, and how things work uh, for Mark uh, around this one. Moving on on things, Marcus Miller, uh, provision Microsoft Teams with Azure Automation part one. So this will be a series from Marcus. Uh, so this is the part one series. What was interesting here is that he's using actually, well, not interesting, not massively surprising, but he's using BMP uh, PowerShell uh, in the Azure function to gain uh, the needed access token, then to operate against the Microsoft Graph, uh, which is, hey, that's definitely a uh, supported and, and usable option. So BMP PowerShell uses the, in the Connect BMP online, you're able to then provide the needed parameters to get access token then to your Azure AD application, and then you get the needed uh, access to operate, right? So that is an interesting thing, because at some point I recall having heard that Azure Functions won't, won't, won't support um, PowerShell anymore. So that's Azure Functions 2. That's a fair point. I, V2, I okay, yeah, yeah. So there's the V1 SDK versus V2 right. SDK. Right. Yeah. So the, the V2 will apparently support soon, unless PowerShell Core? Power, PowerShell Core, yes, correct. Right, and but then we have all discussion that PMP PowerShell is not yet on core because there is correct. a dependency. Because some because we can. Can. Yes, we need to, we as a Microsoft, we need to ship the, the CSAM core first, and then we are able to ship the SharePoint Online PowerShell core and the BMP PowerShell core afterwards. Size, so, size, 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 size score as well, right? Because of, because correct. BMP PowerShell correct. depends on PMP. Yeah. Correct. So uh, we, we, we like a whole the, wall, uh, a, a waterfall of things, right? So true. first there will be sure. CSAM core, PMP size score, and then PowerShell core. And, yeah, but to be fair, we walked through the whole step, so we know for 100% that we can make that happen, uh, but we're just waiting for the, in the BMP side. But then if I put my engineering hat on, we're waiting for resources to really do the official builds yeah. uh, with season. Um, and key critical persons are coming back to work uh, again after a small uh, family break starting today, so we'll hopefully get this moving. So will, will PNP site score on .NET Core be then core PNP site score core? <laughs> Core sharp. That's, that's a good question. <laughs> core, 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 core. The real core, the hardcore. <laughs> hardcore, hardcore. That's actually good. <laughs> so, and this one is from Tony Phillip, uh, Phillips, a, a uh, tweet he was doing earlier today. And, and this is around the, the, the awesome PMP cache capabilities in the PMP as, as uh, JS Core. Now, this link here, if I actually open up this in a tab, one thing to notice here, the, the Tony's uh, reference is pointing to the PMP JS core, which is actually already deprecated. So we, the, from a community perspective as well. So the PMP JS core has been replaced by PMP JS and the same matching documentation is available for caching. So please, 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 if you are using PMP JS core, please move to use PMP JS. And because that's actually the modern replacement for it, it's more efficient, it's more smaller, it's more modular, it's more optimized, and it has more capabilities. So it's um, more and better. More and better, that's right there putting that, <laughs> absolutely. But basically the guidance for caching is, is exactly the same. You're able to set uh, caching timeouts and all of that super easily and then load stuff and stuff will be then in the memory and all of that. So that's really, really cool stuff. And it's gonna reduce the server hits uh, if needed and per call configurations and really, really, really cool stuff. Nice. Cool. Uh, this one is from David Ramalho uh, from Pine Tuning uh, around tenant catalogs and app catalogs and, and what those are. So there's there's two different app catalogs right now. So there's, the, there's the tenant app catalog and then there's the site collection app catalog. So kind of a, how to create them uh, program, uh, from the central admin and also uh, where is it available, what kind of permissions you need to have, and also how do you create site collection app catalog, either using SharePoint Online PowerShell, PMP PowerShell, or CLI. So Woo! you're able to talk, 
<laughs> so, so you're able to target your solutions in a site collection level rather than in a tenant level, which is super important as well. Um, we are looking into having potentially at some point hub app catalog. Uh, so you're able to then target your solutions in a hub level, which I think it's a nice. super beneficial. Absolutely. Not yet. Not there yet. Uh, yeah, yeah, but but idea is really cool. And it seems to me more and more and more like the hubs are or hub sites are becoming not only the collection for things like the content of that, but like when you connect to the hub, you get a number of things that allows you sure. to ensure consistency across the hub. And then when you switch the hub, you will get another one. So yep. it's it's more than collection of collection of sites or collection site collections collection yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly um, um yes absolutely and the role of hubs are growing even in the future as well so more and more and we'll see if we'll get I, i'm not saying this out loud i'm it's interesting to see if we will allow at some point hubs of the hubs so you're able to actually build those hierarchies hubs 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 hubs, hubs. But, uh, let's see right now Site collection belongs to a one hub, um, but a yes. hub is then in the in the organization level. So there's no hub of hubs, so to say. That sounds weird. Makes anyway, <laughs> uh, Chris Kent uh, did a conditional launch of Flow using a list formatting demo uh, in the community call. Uh, this video will go live actually a Tuesday. So at, actually at the same time, this video will go live on Tuesday, 26th of March. But it's basically depending on the on the status and the content of a list item it will show a different start flow button uh, in the in the list formatting this is really so cool. cool really cool yeah it's it Chris is really a master on defining these things uh, so uh, even the people who are actually building uh, column formatting and list formatting I was like wow like, did take he, did what? he did what he did what precisely so really, really cool stuff. Um, now, uh, include source maps in your SharePoint framework package. Uh, you actually had a blog post on this one uh, a year ago or one and a half years ago. Yeah. Uh, this one is from, uh, where's the name? About me, but there's no name. Ah. No, well, anyway, uh, we'll reference the right people uh, later. But basically, this is referencing uh, your blog post as well. But I, I personally, I like the fact that we're getting refresh um, and also updates. Um, so kind of a, hey, this information is available because we get more and more SharePoint Framework developers um, joining on the SharePoint development, uh, the SharePoint Framework development. So yep. it's really useful to know that we're able to do this. Um, and he's referencing nicely your original blog post and then explaining how things are working. Yep. Um, but basic idea is that you're able to then do debugging uh, easily in production. in production, which is yeah. super important. By default, you can do this. Uh, well, you can do this in a workbench, yep. right? Yes. Uh, in a debug mode. But then if you want to do debugging in production, uh, you can actually make that happen as well using this guidance. So. Yeah, so actually th th this is important for, for two things. So one is debugging, the other one logging, right? Because otherwise, yes. Whenever you will have exception, well, guess what? It will be always in line one, and there's something like column twenty thousand fifty one, and that doesn't yes. match in any way to your original code. Meaning yeah. it will be that much more complex for you to find the origin of the error, right? right. So with Absolutely. that, uh, so with this approach, you'll be able to, to know exactly in which file, which line li line of code the error was, and yep. fix it more easily. Absolutely, really cool stuff. Uh, and it, like I said, it's really good to have this refresh uh, articles as well because it's uh, learning these things is all about repeats, 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 reminders, reminders, reminders. Yep. Cool. Um, then we have here from Bernier. Uh, uh, come on, uh, Bernier. Uh, Hugo. Hugo Bernier. That's what it is. Um, yes. So a really nice article. Uh, yes, I remember it correctly. Ultimate developer to a list for SPFX. So this is kind of as Scott Handel, Hanselman has a similar uh, list uh, for .NET development. And his, uh, Hugo is here collecting all of the different tools and cool stuff uh, which you might actually be interested in using in SPFX development. So really, really powerful stuff. Uh, SPFX uh, or Visual Studio Code extensions and Rencore extension was mentioned here as well. Yep. I think you've been involved on in creating that one, and a few, yes. quite a few other other things uh, available. So a lot of a lot of stuff. Um, 
do you want to install all of this to your machine? Debatable, but at least having a one reference where people can go and have a look on, okay, so what is available? What's possible? Yep. And what do they actually do? So really cool stuff. Provisioning, provisioning services and here. There we go. Everything. Ah, there, there you go. Reusable controls. There yes. There it is. Yeah. He is updating this uh, regular uh, all the time. So that's good. Regular and uh, regular. Certain words are pretty difficult for a Finn, so. <laughs> well, I, I don't want to even think how we would sound badly trying to talk <laughs> Finnish. That's fair. Like the, fair. the other day you shared the word with the um, soap box, boxy, 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 box, uh, soap <laughs> yes. thing, yellow yes. stone, whatever what it was for yes. salesman. It was like, this long word, seriously. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, it was a one word. and it was a and it was a palindrome. <laughs> yes, also additionally on top. <laughs> yes. Anyway, <laughs> maybe I should actually add that one in the video when we're chatting this. Yes. <laughs> Fast. Okay. Anyway, um, well, it's not me editing the video this time, but anyway, um, this one was interesting for Federico Por Sedu. Um, he actually wrote this on 16th of March, and it's a modern page a model with PMP uh, PMP JS. And basically, what he's doing here is that he's adding a metadata stamp to a uh, page content type uh, to support marking that page as a starting point. And then uh, when you uh, when you start creating actually new pages, uh, you actually when you click, a, click the toolbar to start creating pages, you will be shown an option to start from an ex ex existing page which has been marked as a page template. Which, funny enough, is exactly what we announced uh, to be pretty soon available in here. No. So at, at, it's actually pretty cool. So now there, there are certain small nuance differences how the implementation is being done in here, and uh, and uh, I just need to remember a person's name, uh, Frederico Frederico's uh, case. So there's the implementation nuances, but it's actually insanely close. Um, so it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's good to see that it's actually <laughs> implemented. So his implementation 100% valid, but obviously we shouldn't be implementing this because we're in, uh, rolling this out as a out of the box capability. But well, still. and I mean, even so, yes. On the other hand, maybe if you have specific needs or a specific sure. way of doing things that isn't available out of the box, well, that might sure. be. That might be where you say, you know what, there is one available out of the box, but we need to be able to do this, this, and that. And for Absolutely. that, we will, we will roll our own. Absolutely. And anyway, I think from a blocking and sample perspective, these are really good because this still shows how you can make that happen. And it is available as a source code uh, as well. So explaining how you can actually make that happen and how, how it's actually being built. Now, yeah. um, it is really, really nice to have this kind of plot post, even though there would be a close out of the box capability because it helps yeah. people to understand that okay this is how i could make things happen absolutely so, really cool stuff and uh, a really good picture as well beautiful day in sardinia so and i guess also with with things like like that there are different elements that you can reuse right so even if, if as you say right the whole thing will be replaced with um something available out of the box there are some patterns like dialogues or templates yes. or doing this yes. or doing that that you will be able yeah. to pick and choose from yep. uh, exactly right so absolutely absolutely really cool stuff <laughs> And really polished stuff uh, as well. So that's, yes. that's really nice and looks really, really uh, clean. Now, uh, from Corey Roth, uh, Corey was in the MVP Summit as well. We had a, quite a few long doc talks uh, over there. ISPFX 1.8 now supports Office UI Fabric React 6.156.0. That's a pretty big, a long version. But basically, Office UI Fabric 6 uh, is supported uh, in the SharePoint framework uh, as part of the, the jumping between the versions and getting the TypeScript compiler to 3.0, uh, you're able to then take advantage of the Fabric React 6 components. Yeah, cool. so now we have 3.3 from Mark, 3.2 from Elio, and 3.0 from Corey. Correct, that is correct. <laughs> because we support all of them, which is very yes. magical. So, um, and then uh, this one was really nice, uh, kind of a, a 
first impressions like wait what formatting announcement list based on severity but this is actually a pretty cool uh setup on using column formatting so and there's the column formatting json and then uh, based on severity of the announcement uh, we're rendering the, the output in a different way i think that's actually pretty cool um, yeah it is uh, it is so really nice example of how to make happen how to make things happen without code kind of well uh, i i was just about to say exactly the same but i was like oh, wait yeah. a minute this is yeah. this, this is code like this is <laughs> yes <laughs> to be honest i would prefer yeah. to 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 read the real code than trying to figure figure out this without preview like what does it do exactly yeah well you can always call chris kent so oh yes <laughs> <laughs> and now, at this moment, you will see on the the video like plus one. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, not. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's that's a fair point. But now, sooner or later, obviously, we're looking into having a uh, additional editing capabilities and formatting capabilities and editors in the column formatting. When we'll see. But um, it's it's um, it's code, but it's not code. It's what is it? It's Local. It, it is it is code. It, 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 it is code. code. Well, I don't know. I mean, if you can imagine like two th 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 lines of 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 this, I wouldn't yeah. say it is lo 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 yes. local. Like like in but in a way, it reminds me of Camel. Remember, if you if you miss any of these, uh, so obviously, or you use the wrong character, you're yeah, it doesn't work. So yeah, you'll be actually, like. It's, it feels it's like wrong. Camel. You're absolutely correct on that. It, it does instead of You level. just have to nest it per perfectly, right? So yes, yes, indeed. Cool. Uh, and the last one uh, is from uh, Russell Cove. Uh, really cool. This is slightly older, but we didn't cover this uh, later. Uh, re uh, using Azure Durable function to implement SharePoint reusable workflows. So, because there is quite often a requirements of building kind of a business workflow uh, uh, for the business um, units or the business. Uh, operations and this is kind of walking through uh, what's a possible and and how what does the durable functions and on top of the, the Azure functions as an option so really cool stuff uh, there's some small formatting things uh, which might make the, the blog post not super readable but there is actually a really a uh, lot of information in here um, on, on how to make things happen so really really cool stuff Thank you, Russell, for that. But that's actually, that's the massive list of things what we wanted to go through today and a pretty long uh, discussion, actually, most likely. So let me stop the sharing. Here we go. Now we're back in the... <laughs> in picture. Side by side. Yes, side by side. A lot of stuff. And obviously that was because last week we did, had a uh, kind of a special recording. We were sitting on the same room and it, we didn't want to really jump on the, on the sharing of articles when we were in the room. So, because that would have yeah. felt awkward. So, <laughs> but but um, that was a good chat, by the way, with Liam as well last week. Um, absolutely, uh, absolutely. Around the role of IT pro and administrators in this cloud world and how it has changed or has it. Mm -hmm. What's <sighs> interesting discussion. For that, you need to see previous episode. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Available now on DVD for nine ninety nine. Plus shipping. Amazon.com, Amazon yes. <laughs> cool. Um, any last words from your side? Um, I think we should be closing relatively fast, unless you have some well, sort of a passive... Well, no, no. So the one thing that I realized, I'm not sure if we mentioned that already, but we mentioned that we released uh, SharePoint Framework 1.8, yep. right? So so yep. that, that was ship, shipped a week before the summit. And along with it, we released a new version of the Office 365 CLI, which allows you to upgrade the project that you had in the past yes. to 1.8. That is a good so point. If you've built something in the past and you want to make use of 1.8, you can use CLI to do the upgrade uh, easily. And the, the video is on my to-do to list now. Thank you, Vesa. Yes, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it works. <laughs> yes, yes. But I think that, like I said, uh, what two to three minutes, five minute videos are super, super important for people to adapt um, on, on things um, rather than, well, the, the long videos are good as well, but if you, but they are getting people excited, getting people interested on certain things and quickly showing this is how you can do something is, I yeah. think it's more even beneficial. So having it short 
like this video, we're, we're always trying to keep this as short as possible. <laughs> and then it becomes longer and longer because there's a, one more thing. Oh, yeah, I want to just show it to you. So how exactly. about you? And then like when you go, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how it works. That's how it works. Uh, but anyway, so it's going to be a slightly slower week this week. Luckily, uh, we can concentrate on actual day-to-day -day work, which is good. Uh, so uh, looking forward uh, on getting stuff moving and locking down our SharePoint conference plan and a few other things. So SharePoint conference coming in May, end of May. So in yes. Las Vegas, I will be there. And then um, directly back, back to back, the European Collaboration Summit. There is the Wiesbaden, European Collaboration Germany. Summit. Correct, on the following week. And Wiesbaden, Germany. Wiesbaden is right next to Frankfurt. So you can actually fly in the tube on Frankfurt and then take a cab or a train. And, there. Yeah, and then just across the river forever from Mainz, where it was last year. Correct. That is correct. I think this one is, has a slightly bigger venue. That was the thing because last year's venue got to be smaller. We uh, and this one has a more uh, capacity. With oh, so actually, so actually, from what I understood, the reason that we moved is that because the venue that we used last year is now being re rebuilt. Mighty, which is a good thing as well. There were certain areas on that venue which were not super optimal. So I think we had yeah. a few internet connectivity issues and connective some technical issues there so it's good so that we're yeah get probably maybe one day it'll all be fixed and we will then see if we get back or not yeah who knows we'll see or we just move to a different place altogether well yeah <laughs> that, that is true as well that's true. We'll see how it goes. But anyway, uh, on uh, so on May, there's actually quite a few conferences. Just to recap on this, there's Microsoft Build uh, in early May uh, from 7th till 9th uh, of May. I think there was a, a call of content even for Build this year. Uh, so we are trying to a slightly different approach this year. Uh, the call of content has been already closed. Um, and I think the announcements are coming up and the schedule is coming up on uh, early April. So that should be pretty cool. cool. Uh, then there's the European uh, SharePoint, uh, not European, SharePoint conference, the actual, the, the, the SharePoint conference in Las Vegas in MGM Grand uh, on the 22nd, 23rd, 24th, or something like that uh, on May. Should I actually double check that? There. Uh, and then uh, right week after that one, there's the European collaboration uh, yes. summit in the Wiesbaden. So, yeah, where okay. we're, we're doing SPNP team, the pre-conference day, I guess yeah. we have we have two tracks. Do I recall Correct. that correctly? Tracks. Yes, yes, yes. We have one we, for share, learning SharePoint framework development and kind of a SharePoint framework specific, and then and one which is kind of more how would I put a classic PMP way of doing stuff where we cover the spectrum of the development. Not so, classic PMP. No, no, no. PMP but way of doing. Yes, yes. The PMP the way. The modern PMP. <laughs> the, the spectrum, so more kind of an architectural thinking. So the things yeah. which you should know as an architect to tell your dev teams that what they should be doing. So that's the spectrum of things rather than yes. a specific SharePoint framework development. Correct. But anyway, we'll talk about this definitely in the upcoming weeks and keep on uh, using the hashtag SPDev Weekly. And so we'll find what you're writing. We can promote your stuff uh, uh, as they're landing on that uh, hashtag as well. But Thank you, Waldek, once again. Um, this Thank is, you, this was episode 32. Uh, well, let's see how long we can keep on the weekly episodes are going. Well, as long as there are weeks in a year, I'm good. I'm uh, here. This, yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> they, they might be on summertime. There might be some family vacations, which we need to figure sure. out how to do. Uh, you cannot have your family vacation at the same time as I do. Then we'll be fine, right? That's how it works. Yeah. Or we find a different way around it. We'll, we'll figure it out. We hire we'll somebody else to, 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 to that do it. That might be actually an option. Or we pre-record. No, that doesn't work. Never mind. <laughs> so if if the community will pre-write the things they want to post, then oh, we will pre-record it, yes, and then we will move in time. Gotcha. Yes, Game yeah. on. So if community is uh, up for it, let's pre-write. <laughs> Articles and pre-published things, yeah. Or we just want to record one episode from the past four weeks. Or you know what? We all agree that we all go on the on vacation at the same time. So there is oh, no one to watch, it. no one to write. Exactly. There is nothing to discuss. <laughs> Indeed. Wow, that's a great idea. So the whole no, it's not. dev community. No, that's imagine a, you are you are on a beach. Hey, Vesha, yeah. I have a question. Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> that is <so> fun. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, I think uh, on that bombshell. Uh, so we'll come <laughs> off with a new Shape on Dev Weekly in a week. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you.